Hey, this is Trevor from Halifax calling in to say that I support creative control on Patreon because I think long form arts journalism is a crucial part of music culture and there's simply not enough of it out there today. Vish is a master interviewer. He lands great guests and he has his finger on the pulse of the ever changing music landscape, both here in Canada and abroad. For all of these reasons and many more, I think you should support Creative Control on Patreon too. To make your flexible monthly donation to Creative Control, please visit patreon.com slash creative control today. I'm Bisha's wife and I will love him no matter what you do. And now he has me on the record saying that. Holy Fuck is an inventive, exploratory electronic music ensemble that, until recently, was primarily based in Toronto, Ontario, consisting of Brian Borchert, Graham Walsh, Matt Schultz, and Matt McQuaig. Holy Fuck are one of the world's greatest live bands, and they've released some of the best records of the 21st century. Their latest is a thoughtful and spirited album called The Leader, which features guest vocals and is one of the most collaborative albums by the band to date. The Holy Fucks members now live in places like Nova Scotia, New York City, and Toronto. They were actually all together in one room when I caught up with them to ask them about their respective musical paths, how they came to be a part of Holy Fuck, and their experiences playing in this unique band. The music, vocals, and lyrical themes found on The Leader, Future Plans, and much more. A part of the E1 Podcast Network with the support of listeners like you, who subscribe to this podcast and spread the word about it, and make flexible monthly donations at patreon.com slash creative control, plus in-kind support from Pizza Trocadero, The Bookshelf, and Planet Bean Coffee in Guelph, and Granddad's Donuts in Hamilton. This is the 519th episode of Creative Control, featuring the fun and funny dudes in Holy Fuck, with your host, me, Vish Khanna. Hello, Brian, are you there? Brian is here. How you doing, man? I'm good, how are you? Good, where in the world are you? Uh, we're in a luxurious condo of uh, downtown Toronto at the moment. Nice, 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 nice. How's it going? Well, wait, wait a minute, didn't you just move? I thought you moved. Yeah, uh, we're actually we're back to do press. This is part of our press schedule today, talking to you. Oh, I'm, uh, I'm part of your press schedule. That's, that's nice. <laughs> You are. Uh, well, you know, we're rarely together, um, although I think you were expecting conference calls, so hopefully this is a little bit better, that we're all here together across the street from CBC, where we're going to be doing um, Q. Oh, so, okay, plugging another show on my show. Thanks a lot, Brian. That's great. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, it's really great. You should check into it. There's this really brilliant guy, Tom Power. He's got quite a few. Well, he's an old friend of mine, that Tom Powers, so I'm sure you'll have a good time on well, that. Well, we'll make sure we plug you today on on or when we do Q. That would so. be that would be incredible. Even if you're just joking, that would be funny. And Tom's a fan of this show, so that would be hilarious. Anyway, <laughs> it's all nice. Uh, it's all good. It's all great. And uh, as you alluded to, there are other people there. So I mm-hmm. want to ask each of them to introduce themselves one at a time, and then everyone listening will get used to their voices. And I'll also ask each of you. Uh, to cite what it is exactly that you do. Actually, Brian, I didn't start with you. Brian, what is what is it you do in the band Holy Fuck? Uh, well, um, I've been there since the beginning, and it's kind of a, I'm a big uh, pile of noise, I guess, sort of some of the more electronic or sounding instruments. Um, you know, uh, it, it changes over time, but it is sort of like beats and sounds and drones. That's kind of, and a bit of the vocals and some of the guitar even recently okay awesome that's 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 my understanding of the thing having seen it many times and followed your trajectory that makes sense to me let's move on to 
Uh, the uh, gentleman to your left. Who is on your left that wants to introduce themselves? Stove. The stove. <laughs> Hello, stove. Oh, it's a stove. I see. I can't see what's going on there. All right. Maybe yeah. let's go to your right. Can we go to your right? Hi, Beach. It's Matt Schultz. I play the drums. Hey, Matt. How's it going? We, how are you? I'm not bad. I'm not bad. Uh, you are in Brooklyn. Are you in New York? Uh, not currently, but yeah, I live there. Yeah, I don't know. Sorry, that didn't come out right. You know what I meant. I didn't mean that at all. That was, <laughs> that was just a mis... This is why Tom Powers should be conducting this interview, frankly. I think... <laughs> We can all I'm agree. Like Skywalker Jedi hologram right now. <laughs> <laughs> now you're based in New York, but where are you from actually? Uh, I'm from the Ontario of the South, which is Ohio. Right. Okay. Right. So you're you're the are you the only American member of Holy Fuck? I believe so. And how's that going for you? How's America doing? I've heard not the best things. I think I think everybody knows. <laughs> it's been pretty fucked up for a few years now. Yeah. And it's probably going to be worse. That's great. That's a cheery note <laughs> to to go on here. And you're from the. I don't get down with nationalism too much, though. I don't. So fuck it, you know. Yeah. I'll move. Yeah, yeah. You're from the Buckeye State. Is that the name of Ohio? That's yeah. That's what some call it. <laughs> what, what what does that mean? What is a Buckeye? Well, I don't even know what that means. Is that a sports thing? Uh, well, I, I, I think it is. Again, it depends on who you ask. A Buckeye, I think, is some sort of tree nut. That, that you can't eat, but they somebody fashioned like a fudgy, chocolatey treat that looks like a real Buckeye that you can't eat. America's weird. That's a weird thing to do. Believe it. <laughs> Believe it, man. I don't understand what that is. Okay, so you play drums, and you've been in Holy Fuck for... Brian said he's been there since the beginning. Are you relatively new? I don't think so. I think I came in on, like, on the second year of the band. I, I've been playing with them since 2000. Actually, first... Yeah, second year. I uh, played my first gig in 2006. Okay. Now, I know Brian is being a guy from out east in the Maritimes, and then <clears throat> he lived in Toronto for some time. I believe he's back out east, and we can clarify that. Maybe we did already. I don't know. But anyway, so my question to you, Matt, how did you come to uh, know the people in Holy Fuck and get to start playing with them? Because as we've already established, you are American. How did this happen? A former group I was playing with called the Enon or Enon, again, depending on who you ask, was playing in Hamilton uh, on a cold December night in the year 2000. And I met Graham Walsh, who has not yet introduced himself. And uh, we became friends that night and stayed in touch. And eventually he, um, I guess these guys were South by Southwest and saw us play and he emailed me after the fact and said, you know, mentioned the band and said that they, they had sort of like a fluid cast of drummers at the time and uh, invited me to come play with them. And then it eventually happened. I think they've had a show. Where did you guys, you guys had a show at the Bowery Ballroom or yeah, something? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I just, they came to New York and we jammed and played the show the next day. And it was, it was really fun. Okay, cool. Now you, I've been in a band, one of my first bands. I was a, a the live drummer playing to a drum machine, which fooled some people into think I was a better drummer than I was. Uh, <laughs> but uh, you are in a similar boat where you're uh, you're you're providing the drums uh, for the band, but you're you've got to kind of negotiate the other stuff going on, the rhythmic stuff in particular. You're not the sole source of the rhythm. How right. how complicated is that for you? Yeah, you know, it's much easier now. It used to be, I, in my opinion, the the music used to be based more rhythmically on sort of like Casio keyboard drum beats and stuff. That was more difficult to deal with. I, I think now the the I think more of the the drumming is happening from me, but there's still like loads of there's still like drum machines and things happening uh, on occasion. But it's more like it seems more like I I'm carrying most of the weight on that, and then there's more other rhythmic st stuff going on. Right, okay. Now, you are American. That means you're inherently competitive. Are you competitive? Hey, then why you bring that up? I, I don't know. I, I can't help it. It's just the way I feel right now. <laughs> just the way I feel. But are you ever competitive with the other drum beats? Are you like, you know what? I'm better than you guys, the machines. Do you ever feel that way? Do you feel like you're competing? No. No, I'm, I'm, a, I'm not a competitive person, I don't feel like. And I, I definitely know 
what sucks about things, and it's usually me. So okay, all right. Well, <laughs> a, a humble American from the Buckeye State. I was not expecting that. That's that's amazing. <laughs> that's amazing. Well, thank you, Matt. Thanks for introducing yourself. So I've I don't know exactly where you're sitting. So who wants to go next? Why don't we, Graham? Graham Walsh. You were on my left. If you're going going to the left, still. Do you want to go? Well, I, I tend to lean left. I'm Canadian. Let's go to Graham Walsh. Uh, Graham, are you there? I'm here. How's it going? Oh, it's it's okay. Did you know I moved? I I I, I don't know. I guess I didn't. I, I live in Edmonton now. I'm calling you from Edmonton. What? Yeah, I yeah, 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 yeah. I've heard tell of your move, but I wouldn't. I didn't. I didn't want to be firm in that until I got confirmation from you directly. So I'm glad you're addressing that. Yes. So thank everyone. Yeah. Everyone mistrusts the media now, don't they? We can't. You needed nope. to hear it from me directly. I thought it was fake news, but... It seems like it might be. Why would anyone move to Edmonton? I shouldn't say that. I'm going to insult the people (laughs) I'm with here. But yeah, no, I'm in Edmonton now. I don't know why I brought myself into this, but you and I are friendly and we see each other from time to time. And I I thought I would, you know, get a jump ahead of the, you know, get ahead of the the chase there, whatever the expression is. I can't speak today. It's so early here. But anyway, yeah. It could have been awkward. It could have been awkward. I'm glad you cleared that. (laughs) Now you are, uh, you are living in Toronto still, I assume. Yep, I'm yep, holding on. Okay, how's that going? Yeah, it's good. Yeah, I don't know. The city's changing, and uh, but I love it. And yeah, the, the the family roots are taking hold here. So, um, but yeah, it's yeah, it's interesting to see uh, what what's going to happen with with Toronto and the arts community, things like that. But that's kind of been on my mind lately. But no, it's good. When you say uh, the the city is changing. I can't help but assume you mean that people are uh, maybe leaving, people are moving. One person close to me left, and uh, to my left, and he also left. And uh, yeah, I don't know. It's uh, that's that was obviously a big change for sure. And then uh, yeah, there's just a lot of development going on and things like that. So uh, other things that aren't as important to me, but still affect me. Were you were you surprised per se that your the person to your left, Brian, moved away from Toronto? <laughs> I don't know. Not really. <laughs> sort of. I think I told him he was the first, he was kind of one of the first people. That's the thing where I'm kind of curious to see what happens with, with the city. Cause I, I told him he was the one, I was like, you were one of the first people to kind of pull the parachute. Cause it's getting, uh, kind of gnarly to live there. And I, like, I, you know, I have friends who are maybe in, in really other friends who are in really precarious situations are like, you know, people can't afford rent. And they're trying to be a musician and there's like the ch- cheap studios are closing down and there's, you know, pe- people sharing rehearsal spaces. It's just like real estate is getting expensive. So it's hard to, it's hard to be, it can be hard to be a musician in this, this city here. Well, I, I will say that it might not seem this way to, to you maybe, but Guelph, where I lived, is very similar in terms of the economic stress. So, you know, Brian, uh, and again, we're speaking on Brian's behalf and he's in the room. This is a little odd, but uh, he moved uh, away from Toronto and headed east. I'm telling you, and this works, this is nice that we're circling back maybe to me, which I prefer. Uh, I, yes. I left Guelph for Edmonton. Like I also left Ontario. There's people, something's going on there. Has it given you, it seems to have given you a little bit of pause or at least anticipation about what's next for the province, what's next for your region. Is that fair? It's been something on my mind, and then, but I, you kind of like, you think about geography. I'm trying to think of where, like, what what my city brings to me, and what what I get out of my the city that I live in, and being an artist, and what what I what I benefit and from being from living in a particular city, and sometimes you know how. At the end of the day, I just want to make music and be try and be a musician. And so, as soon as the, the the environment that I live in becomes a detriment to that, then maybe it's time to to think about things. You know? So, yeah. And, and Toronto is the cultural epicenter, or so it would have us all believe. So you got to be kind of there to do what you're doing, right? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, but then <laughs> you know, you can do it. It doesn't. Mean- that's the thing. Like, it doesn't have to be in. I, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, your your friend Matt, your friend and mine, Matt, lives in Brooklyn, and he plays in the band Holy Fuck. How does he do that? That must be through the internet or something, right? Uh, yes. <laughs> well, we we beam his hologram in whenever we need it, and uh, it's it works out. Yeah, yeah. We beam him up. We we teleport him to wherever we need him to be, and then we make music that way on a plane. We, we teleport him physically on an airplane. Yeah, aeroplane heard of such device and uh flies at 
uh, vast speeds through the air and gets him relatively quickly to wherever we need him to be. Yeah, I took one of those to Edmonton. Uh, they're, yeah. <laughs> they're, they're fantastic. I, I agree with you. Now, uh, yeah, uh, Graham, speaking of magical technology, what is it that you, how would you define your role in, in Holy Fuck exactly? Um, I guess I, contr- I also contribute uh, to noisy drones and keyboard parts and things, stuff. Um, how do you? How, how does one get into this? Like this, this seems like a a new frontier in musical technology. I assumed. What was your first instrument, there, Graham? I've never. I can't remember if we've talked about this before. What was your first musical instrument? Well, if you want to go way back, I started playing the piano, and I hated it. I think it's the same same kind of like uh, arc as most kids who start music. You play piano because your parents wanted you to take piano lessons, and then. Um, you get a little bit older and then you see all these rock stars playing guitars and stuff. So then I wanted to play guitar after that. So that's the second instrument that I played was guitar. And then, but immediately, uh, kind of came back to keyboards and things like that. One of the first bands I played in, I, I played synths and stuff in and a bit of guitar. But, uh, yeah, I guess the piano thing kind of sort of held on there because I and then I, yeah, I started I got my first synth a long time ago and, and started doing that kind of stuff so yeah, yeah. some of you are uh, parents I believe I mean I know some of you are parents and I all of, them. All of you are parents so I, I'm one of those parents that you alluded to that has made my at least so far my son is in piano lessons and I keep he gets a little frustrated sometimes and I keep saying you know this is going to pay off down the line and that's what you discovered yourself right Yep, correct. And we're we're going well with our daughter Frances, who's take, she's eight and she's taking piano lessons. And it kind of yeah, ebbs and flows, and you gotta try and keep it try and keep it fun. But there's a bit of work there that she doesn't doesn't quite like. I I, I can identify with that with that with her for sure. It's yeah, the it's it was, the practicing. They don't like the practicing. My son is also uh, Levon. He's eight and he's taking mm-hmm. the piano. And he was going to quit until he discovered he could do recitals. He wanted to do the performances, and that's what kept him going, which is surprising. That's great. Yeah. Well, he's a showboat. His dad's a hot dog. He wants to be a hot dog, too. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. Well, Graham, uh, it's nice to connect, uh, and uh, we, we should move on to, I believe, the last member of Holy Fuck. Who are we moving on to right now? It's Matt McQuaid. He's trying to change his flight. He's, uh, he's, he's, he's on the phone with Air Canada right now, so this will, be a, this will be actually a good call because you might be having two conversations with him at once. Yeah, that's what I'd prefer. That's what I like. Is he there? Matt, are you there? Real great content. <laughs> Matt, are you there? I can't hear you. Are you there? Can you hear me? I'm here. I can hear you and the, uh, a Frenchman in my other ear. Well, I'm kind of like a Frenchman myself. Well, don't get carried away. <laughs> oh, so, okay. I, I won't. I won't at, at all. What are you? Dr- why are you trying to change your flight? Where are you going? I'm the heavy weather hitting Halifax tomorrow uh, when I'm supposed to fly home. And uh, so <clears throat> I'm able to change it because of that. So I'm going to try and fly out tonight. Oh, okay. Now, so are, is this stands to reason. You're based in Halifax? That's right. Okay. And how long have you been there? Is that where you're from? No, I'm from Prince Edward Island. I've been in Halifax for um, almost six years. Six years. Okay. Now, you and I have encountered each other uh, some somewhere down the line, yes? Yeah, I mean, with uh, this band, I'm sure at least at Hillside, I think. Yeah. Any any other times? I'm trying to think. I thought we we we. Uh, have you do you play in other bands? Uh, a little, yeah, sporadically, I guess. Not so much anymore. Okay. Do you get called? What do you play in Holy Fuck? Bass guitar. Bass guitar. And do you get called in to play with other people? I feel like we met at Hillside Inside, is what I'm thinking, but I can't remember with whom. No, I don't think so. No? Okay, well, I can't see you. I might be wrong. And there's two guys named Matt in this band, so forgive me. I mean, that's confusing in itself, isn't it? True. Yeah, very confusing. Now, how how did you end up being in this band, Holy Fuck? Um, well, I guess I knew um, Brian by virtue of being from the East Coast. Both of us, we had some mutual friends. I guess I and I, yeah, and I, and I knew Graham just from being in Toronto and playing music, just, you know, just in passing. But uh, I was friends with the former bass player, the guy who had the position before me. And so I uh, I knew when he was leaving, and I got in touch, and that was it. Okay. All right. So, you, uh, so you're, you're relatively new to the band. Similar question, I guess. I didn't... No, I've been in the band 12 years. 12 years? Yeah. 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 
12 and a half, maybe. Okay, so, okay. All right, yeah. so there you go. So we've probably crossed paths many times, to be frank. I mean, I've seen, I've seen Holy Fuck at least 12 times. That's once a year. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Almost, I would say. Now, similar question to your uh, your other counterpart named Matt. Uh, do you find it sort of is it is it is it a unique experience to play in Holy Fuck compared to other uh, bands you've been in in terms of holding down a rhythm and trying to maintain uh, you know some synchronicity with some of the more uh, pre-programmed things or synthesized things? I guess there's not a lot of pre-programmed things, but you know what I mean, like the kind of synthesized stuff. Is that difficult at all? Not so much for me because I just follow Matt. So. I don't, I don't have to deal with any of the, uh, you kind of have like a little mouse crawl on my phone over there. So. <laughs> I'm sorry, there's vermin? Is there, is there trouble at the, the phone location? What's going on? Nothing, nothing wrong here. Yeah, but it, I, I, I don't really have to kind of uh, battle with any of those things. I just, for me, it's a play, like playing in any other band. Well, I have more, to say, you know, more I, or less. Yeah, well, the bass playing and I, some of the bass parts. If I might say, on this new album, are fantastic. They really jump out at me, and they yeah. they remind. You can't win them all. <laughs> what does that mean? Did I, oh, because I said some of them. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. I, I, all of them, a hundred percent of the bass parts are solid. If I might say. Thank you. Thanks uh, very much. You're welcome. Now, uh, have you had any luck with Air Canada at this point? Have you rescheduled your? Still, still on hold, but I'm confident. What's okay. Okay. Just the man talking. <laughs> It's just the yeah. French the French man is just yattering in your ear the whole time. So high that they can't even put me on hold. Oh yeah. So, so it's some guy talking. So it's just a guy repeating that message over and over. I, presumably until I. But that I, sounds I, like you're on hold. I well yeah. But maybe not. Non hold hold. It's like a weird. Well, this better. is this is fascinating, and I'm glad to be a part of this. I thank you for uh, uh, your <laughs> your input there, Matt. Now. Uh, I, I thank you all for introducing yourselves to the people listening. Uh, I want to go back to, to Brian for a moment. Uh, Brian, uh, you have some guest vocalists on this. Oh, by the way, congratulations on this new album. Uh, I think it's wonderful. It's called The Leader. Uh, and uh, how are you feeling about things, Brian? Are you happy with how it all turned out? Was this a epic saga or was it, uh, you know, how does this rate in terms of ease in the holy fuck canon let's start with that was this a complicated record to make yeah it was they, i mean they all are in different ways I, I think um this one's kind of interesting because it really it was like all the pieces were there and it only made sense when that last screw was put in you know it was like it, it didn't look like anything until suddenly it was it was done i was I like oh it's a dog house or you know it was just like didn't know what it was going to be but so in a way, it's the simplest record. It's it's all the pieces were there, but it's something something happened at the last minute that I think we all really kind of fell in love with it at the last minute. Um, which is just kind of a fun, a nice revelation to have. Are you able to kind of home in on what that thing was? That screw you're describing? What was it? It's it's interesting. I don't know. Um, well, pre- the I think albums in the past, like if you go back to our, some of our first few records, which you know seem like a long, you know they are a long time ago. There was a certain chaotic element to it where it just felt like there was a lot happening, and it was just a matter of holding up a microphone to capture it. Right. You know, any day that we'd be in a studio, we were just like making noise, making sounds, and and trying and like recording all of it, and just sort of cobbling together what we felt made a really strong record out of a larger body of work. And um, then we kind of took a, a bit of a break doing family things and stuff and came back with congrats. And, and on that record, we, we recorded at least, I mean, geez, we must have recorded close to 18 songs or so. Hmm. And then we kind of cobbled those down to, to being the, the final record. And this one was the, the first record where it was kind of the opposite, where we only had these songs. <laughs> so I guess that was it. It's like not having not having other stuff laying around to distract us or to get mesmerized by or dazzled by. Like we, there's always this thing of like having too much and having to pare it down. And for the first time it was just sort of like, okay, this is all we have. Let's just make sure it's good. Mm-hmm. And I think that's why it's sort of like, it was that last screw, you know, that last light on the Christmas tree. <laughs> you take a step back and you're like, Oh, isn't it nice? Yeah. It's done. Oh, yeah. And, and, and it, and it worked and it, and, and there was a moment where I think we were all a little um, anxious that we didn't have enough. Like, oh, we're going to have to book another studio session and it's going to 
mean the album's going to get that much further delayed. And so it was a really pleasant discovery that we we like it. We 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 were proud of it, and um, and it worked. I want to ask you something that I, I don't know if I've ever really talked to you about this because I, I knew you as sort of a songwriter, a singer, in, in in a somewhat I don't mean to say conventional, but in in a in a frame that I guess folk <laughs> pop realm, you know, verse, chorus, bridge, whatever. You you know you know what I'm getting at there? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Right. So when Holy Fuck emerged, I couldn't tell if it was um like a, a side project. I don't want to say it was a lark, but it seemed to me to be like a just a just a way of expressing yourself in a totally different way, which it is. But I couldn't tell if it was the primary thing you were going to be doing. I knew you as like you know Brian Borchard, like the songwriter. Do you looking back, like did Holy Fuck emerge out of just a social thing? Like I just want to do this other kind of music. It doesn't fit with what I'm doing. Did it seem like it was going to be something you did on the side or and then it, I think it's fair to say it's become your main thing. Can you home in on that, like, and identify what I'm getting at there? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I, there's always a longer answer to every question. I'll, I, I, you know, try to keep it to the simplest way to describe it. But I think um, it was the first time I ever really followed my gut. Like, uh, I, I don't know. I, I guess I had a lot of like kind of more like concepts or philosophies and ideologies and these bigger kind of you know, questions that keep you awake at night. And sometimes it's easier to just go with the flow and kind of continue the, the pattern that you've been in with other bands, you know, like, you know, since teenagers, you know, jamming with friends and like, I play guitar and you play drums and oh, and I sing and, and you have these roles and, and it feels, it, it's fun and it feels right. So, you know, when I moved to Toronto and, you know, sort of continue to, to do that, I think I fell into a bit of a pattern where, where that was easy. But I think there was something nagging at me where I really wasn't tapping into the things that I really um, more fundamentally wanted to do. Like, and, and so I think Holy Fuck started from that. It was a little. It was the first time where it came out of a concept or it came out of an I, like an idea. And and that, in hindsight, I think was more important. I think it was a. I think it was a truer statement for me. So I think that songwriting is, I equate that more to like daydreaming or something where it's an enjoyable thing to do. It's kind of like a hobby, but holy fuck was like the first time I, I really put something serious, even though it seemed like a lark, even though it had that feeling of being a side project, it was, it was really based in, in bigger kind of concepts and maybe even I was aware of, or certainly bigger than I let on in the beginning where it did feel like maybe it was just a, like a, a fun experiment or so in like you said it's a project so, so hopefully that kind of explains kind of how i sat with in the beginning no that's that's well that's well well said actually i appreciate that um graham uh because i think of you and brian as and at least initially the con, con, you know the people who conceived of this thing on some level how do you relate to what brian just said about this being sort of a conceptual idea that has now it seems to have really uh, obviously we're, we're we're I forget when this band started, but we're going on a long time here. Um, it's obviously sort of come to fruition. It's found its footing. Graham, how do you feel about uh, what Brian was just saying about what this band was going to be and what it's turned out to be? Yeah, I I, I agree. I, I I mean, I started playing guitar with Brian and his band, and uh, knew he had this this other thing that he was doing and uh again like it, it definitely resonated with me personally being like a, someone who played synths and like tinkering and, and experimenting with noise and stuff like that there too so um yeah it was and i think i mean for me it felt more it, it, at the beginning it felt like because like, you never know what anything is going to turn into but it was just a, a fun experiment and a fun way of just sort of exercising these demons and, and have us playing this euphoric music and not really, I don't know. I, I didn't put any, any, um, any expectations onto it. It was just really something really fun, fun and exciting to do. And people who came to the shows really loved it and, and it eventually took off. But I think the course of it over time has, has evolved na very naturally. And in that, um, yeah, like we we we've kind of been 
refining this musical language and a way of writing and, and composing that's been that's really fun and natural. I don't know where I'm going with this, but uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it is. It um, is. It's always fascinating when the thing you do that is kind of a lark side project, if you will, takes off. Mm-hmm. Isn't it, that's the weird thing, right? Because on some level, that's supposed to be. Or rather, it's not supposed to be. Those things can be kind of effortless. You're just doing it for fun. Whereas I, I've been in these situations too where the thing you think is the most important thing doesn't resonate with people as much as the sort of side project thing. And you guys, I mean, when Holy Fuck emerged, you were kind of in the midst. We were in this indie rock kind of renaissance here in Canada and Southern Ontario and, and the Maritimes, so I guess across Canada really. And you guys were doing something so interesting because people would <clears throat> you would play and we would we couldn't help but dance. It wasn't just arms folded, you know, staring at the gear <laughs> or listening to lyrics. Like it was a visceral thing that must have been pretty mind blowing for you on stage to know that you had this control or power over people to you know move. You move them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think I was probably. More, uh, I was just excited people were coming to the shows. <laughs> but uh, yeah, definitely. And then we definitely felt like we were doing something different than everybody else. And I think that maybe helped not have any expectations. I don't know. Yeah, there was no, maybe nothing else to hold it up to. Um, and yeah, I find like removing expectations, I, I think about that and what like m- maybe it allows you to navigate it a little bit more and, and be a little bit more carefree and and that maybe that helps the success of something i don't know yeah I don't know. no i would agree uh matt matt schultz are you still there no nope. what is he gone i'm gone oh no you, you are there sorry i, oh, I just wanted yeah. to make sure you're still there matt you've played in many bands uh it sounds like or you've played in some bands and you've been on the road with holy fuck i know you guys have played festivals you've played all sorts of places from your perspective and i know it can be impossible on some level for you to not have a bias here, but does Holy Fuck stand out on a bill? Does Holy Fuck stand out in your own trajectory in terms of the music you've played? You're speaking to the humble American again. I can't answer that. You can't answer that? It doesn't feel like something different? I'm never going to say the band I'm in is interesting or cool, like, ever. So, sorry. (laughs) I want to check your citizenship. You don't seem American to me. (laughs) (laughs) You're a couple of Americans. How about on a per- on a personal level? <laughs> on a personal level, does it feel particularly fulfilling compared to some of the other music you've made? Uh, comparison, no. Um, I I don't get involved in things unless I'm like it or want to do it a hundred percent anyway. Because because I'm so busy and everything is like it's just like oh okay, I'm gonna add another level of stress. So I mean, I I don't know. I, I it's to me it's all the same. Like. All the bands, I just do them and try to do a good job, and you know that's all. Okay, all right. No, that's fair. That's a fair response. In terms of how this band works, Matt, um, are, is it Graham and Brian kind of bringing things to you guys, or is it is it jamming things out? How would you describe the creative process from your perspective? <laughs> well, <laughs> um, uh, it it depends. I mean, there have been things in the past where somebody brought more of a thing in and there's there's some stuff on this record like that but there's i more and more we've been creating things together for the last two records we actually we used to just never practice of course because we toured so much we would just we would make this a dumb song up and sound check and then it would be it'd end up on a record you know or we just would we saw we literally i don't think i went more than two weeks without seeing these guys for years. Mm. And then we, everybody, we start having kids and spending more time apart. So then we, we actually made it an effort to get together and we're like, we're going to write songs with, with, with congrats. And we started jamming together. So it became more collaborative on that respect. But at the end of the day though, I mean, we all kind of do our thing and then we, we try to tell each other what's good and bad about what we all did. And then, Brian and Graham kind of sit with it at the end and like really whip it into shape. Okay. Yeah. I didn't mean to delineate, uh, uh, you know, Brian and Graham between the two mats, but I, I, that's my, is that, is that the wrong perception that it is? It sounds like you're confirming that at the end of the day, 
It's Brian and Graham trying to make sense of what you've come up with together. Well, I wouldn't say that now. I mean, it, it does definitely was that in, in some cases, but again, it's more it's more collaborative now. Where I think they're it's more now is like putting sprinkles on. Right. Okay. We're kind of making a song, but then someone's like, "This needs something here," and you know, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's the perception I have. So one of the things that's sticking out for me on this record are some of the lyrics. And uh, Matt, do you, do you contribute in that way at all? I know there's guest Absol- folks. Absolutely not. You, do you, are you a songwriter? Do you like words? I, I like words. I use them daily. Um, They're good, right? <laughs> words are fun. I like them. I'm using, one, I'm using some of them right now. <laughs> yeah, I, no, I'm not a songwriter. I mean, I, I've... I make I make again I I make songs with other people, but I wouldn't just show something to somebody like look what I did and right uh, not my forte. Okay, I want to go back to uh, I assume other Matt is still on the phone. Let's leave him be. Trying to figure out his flight is that fair? He's, he's, uh, he's, he's going home tonight, so you can speak. He's to him. going home, boy. Oh. Oh, oh, good job. That's great. I mean, do you, do you do you like living in Halifax? By the way, because I was there uh, in the summertime, and someone told me that uh, the, the water, the ocean, was bad. That it's going to it's going to make it bad there. Are you do you do you have that sort of anxiety? You mean like sea level rise? Yeah, or I think that's what they meant. I don't think they meant that it was going to become some sentient beast and that there would just be you know an ocean <laughs> monster. But maybe maybe that's what they meant. No, I mean the water okay. levels are rising, and that's kind of scary. The weather's weird. Are you? Does it make you nervous to be out there? Yeah, I think about that every minute of the day. And it really sucks. Um, but I do live on top of a hill, so I have a little, a few extra years, I think. Okay, good. Well, my neighbor. I'm glad I checked in just to make sure everything was okay. I, I, am, I am worried about that. But no, I want to go back to uh, Brian for just a moment, I think. Because Brian, uh, when it comes to songwriting uh, and, and sort of lyrical expression on this record... I wonder how that came about. You have guest vocalists here. Can you talk a little bit about um, these lyrics? Did you help write them? D- are these the vocalists' uh, contributions? Can you speak to that? Um, yeah, for the most part, the, the people we brought in, well, there's three guest vocals on the record. Actually, there's four if you include Anna um, doing a Swedish spoken word on the last track. Um, this is your wife, Anna? Yes, yeah. Just yeah. making sure. Uh, he did that on, um, there's a song on Congrats, but it's the same thing. It just kind of was like a texture that maybe we felt would be really good. Like this kind of, um, it's just something interesting about it being in a different language and, and, and something kind of, I don't know, it, it, it created a vibe. But yeah, in the case of Alexis Taylor singing on his track, as well as uh, Nick Albrook from Pond, who sings on, uh, on a bridge. So his, his part is more of a cameo. They both wrote their own parts and their own lyrics and everything. Okay, um, okay. And, you know, it's, it's a bit of a tricky thing to navigate because if you're going to work with, um, you know, people that you admire and people who are really, you know, creative and, uh, you know, you just there's something about them that you admire and that's why you want to work with them in the first place. You don't want to sort of, um, you know, you don't want to, you know, hold them back. You want to let them do their thing. So... In that regard, it was better to let them write their own parts. Um, and in, in the case of Lux that Alexis sings on, I already had a vocal, and we just scrapped it. We, we didn't really want him to redo what I'd done. However, we played it for him just to kind of give him a bit of the tone and the mood um, and saying why we liked it. Like, this is sort of a thing we were going for, because really it's, it's a blank slate and people could take it anywhere. So it was kind of good to just give a little bit of the framework and from there, it, it just it just turned into his um, his song. Okay, the album is called "The Leader." The song "The Leaders" is sung by whom? Um, that's Angus from uh, Liars. So that was one where uh, that ended up being him just re- uh, doubling a, a vocal that I was already singing. So it maybe it wasn't as as much a creative. Uh, position that he filled on that one he he did write um some interesting stuff for a different track that didn't make the record and that's kind of where we were in conversation together and how that how it came to be that he sang on that on the leaders as well so the one of the lyrics that stood out for me on that song is um are you fighting for the cause are you fighting just because did i get that right yeah okay so what the 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 deleting is an interesting term in sort of the social media parlance i would say is that where that comes from not exactly um i mean it's one of those things where like you're you're hearing a 
you're hearing something in 2020 and it, and it might resonate with what's going on in recent times, but maybe just because we're older and slower and, and lazier, I think things show up on a record that might already be old ideas. Um, I think that's just natural. Like the song title came from like a list of potential band names and stuff that was written like on a scrap of paper from probably f five years ago. And the lyric was written separately from that in a different situation. And those things come together and it, it creates a mood and it definitely feels like it has a singular narrative, but it, it doesn't really. I think the, the larger picture, I mean, the lyric, first of all, came from, it did come from social media. I think it came specifically, though, from the comments section. <laughs> oh. And I wanted to call it, I wanted to call it song comment people as a, like a riff on pulp. But, you know, it's like, or in other words, I call them first responders. Those are people that will always respond <laughs> first. It, it, to anything you put online, and I'm sure you've experienced this too, anything you put up, the first responders are always negative. Yeah. You know, like I made this Chipmunks record where I took all the records and slowed them down and made them into something that I thought was quite beautiful, and I was excited to share it with everyone, and I put it up for free, and it was free, and people were listening to it, and they're really enjoying it, and the first responses were, that's stupid, I could have done that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be like, I did that when I was four. This is garbage, you know. And and I think that's kind of where some of that came from. It's just this idea of like this, this kind of you know ever present um, miasmic haze of negativity that just sort of floats around, and 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 um, it seems to be one of the first and easiest uses of this tool we've made is that people can use it to fight. And, uh, but I, but I think we have sometimes this kind of notion that we're using it for something else. Like I'm, I'm learning about, uh, you know, this hobby I love. And then secretly you're just on there like arguing with people or something. Do like, you think that's what it's become or that's what it always has been really? It feels like it's been that way for some time. Like that line really stuck out for me in this day and age because <laughs> it does feel like I'm trying to delete these things, well, not delete them. I just try not to use any of these things as much as I used to because mm. I don't know what's going on with the algorithms, but it's almost mm. all negative stuff in my various feeds. It's like it knows I'm looking for the bad stuff maybe. And yeah, I, I, well, I think you're right there. I think you've said it better than I could because, and I'm glad that you picked on the, up on that idea of de that form of deleting um, as like, Oh, almost sort of like empowerment. You have like, a choice uh, in this. We have a choice in all yes, of this. Yes, exactly. Exactly. And I think that's where that question, are you fighting for a cause? Are you fighting just because? Just to kind of remind us that, hey, look, there is a lot of just like, you know, wasted time. Uh, I can appreciate that people have like, they do want to get things done and they want, and we want to kind of, you know, affect change and make something better. Oh, there's that mouse again. Is it run, <laughs> running across your phone? Are you, uh, are you, uh, is your headset, uh, rubbing against your beard? Is there actually a mouse? I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> we should have done this over FaceTime video so I could see <laughs> what was happening. But yeah, no, okay. I, but yeah, I, I, I don't think it needs, we need to say anything more about it. I mean, I think that's just it. It's something empowering about the idea of unplugging or, or like setting your own boundaries. And I think that's kind of what we mean by the whole thing. Like, it's just like, let's just, let's just still have a human role in this and let's, let's, uh, you know, I mean, that's kind of what our music is about. Like we, the four of us get together in person uh, as much as we can. We're not trying to send files over Dropbox to, to, to write music together that way. Like we, we really try to have an experience together where we're, we're interacting as people and, and saying as much as we can together and, you know, trying to keep from resorting to, you know, emails and texts and the way things can get nasty and stuff. Like, we need to remember the human element and stuff, I guess. Yeah, that's fair to say. Well, uh, we, we probably need to wrap up pretty soon, I'm guessing, uh, because you have to do that other interview at some point, I'm sure, right? Yeah, you got to check in with your buddy Tom. See what he's saying. Yeah, make sure you plug my show. I just, I can't, I can't stress that enough. Uh, before <laughs> I wrap this up, though, Graham, I just want to follow up with you just about what we were just talking about. Are there any other lyrical themes or moods about this record that you want to address or or maybe highlight? Because I was going to say that we, we just got into kind of a darker or, or at least a deeper conversation, if not darker. It's a rather upbeat record. Like I think tonally it feels celebratory in so many ways. I think there is an illusion in uh, one of the press materials about how 
you were kind of inspired. Uh, the song uh, "Free Gloss" was inspired by Electric Circus on Much Music, which is interesting. <coughs> that's an interesting allusion to me because that was just a, for those who don't know, that was just a show where if you watched it, it was just fairly beautiful, conventionally beautiful people dancing in a club. And there was yeah. just like, you know, house music or techno music or electronic music playing. So there's this kind of party aspect to this record, um, despite what maybe Brian and I were just talking about on some level, which uh, just to say this, that was a celebratory conversation. On some level, we have a choice. It's great. However, Graham, anything else you want to address about this record that we haven't touched upon yet? Well, nothing specific. I mean, it's funny that Electric Circus reference seems to be one that I was, I was worried that was going to get latched onto too much, but whatever. I mean, it makes sense. It was one kind of one little, uh, one little, um, reference to one song, but, um, I don't know. I think it, it maybe it was a tiny inspiration for that song, but it kind of fits, I think with everything and just sort of like the, the, the free creative spirit of that show and the, the dancing and the outfits and stuff like that. Kind of like, maybe speaks to some some degree on how we we create and we're, we're trying i think we're just trying to make music that resonates with us and makes us vibrate and have fun and so yeah i don't think we're intentionally dark or anything like that but um this one is, yeah i don't know i'm i'm my train's fallen off the track <laughs> no and i i can appreciate that but i and i i basically just asked you to articulate what joy feels like and that can't be fun no it's not fun <laughs> no joy feels i mean basically i don't know yeah it's just a vibe man we're just going for a vibe no it does have a vibe i will say like i i think it is i mean brian would you agree it feels like a somewhat optimistic uh, sounding record it's like a party record on some level for sure Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, I think that's great. I think that's something I consider that a success if we can do that because, you know, getting together and playing music, um, I think for all of us is sort of a form of therapy. I mean, it, it, you know, maybe, and I do think sometimes our music can get kind of intense or apocalyptic or dark or something, but I, I think it's always embedded in that is a sense of catharsis, hopefully. And so I think it's, I think it's a, a a, a real success if we can kind of convey that to the listener, this, this notion of celebration. Good. Okay. Awesome. Well, uh, to wrap up here, um, Matt Schultz, what's coming up next for Holy Fuck? I know you've got a bunch of tour dates. Do you have a sense of what's next, maybe creatively or otherwise? Is there, are there more releases beyond the leader that we can look forward to? Probably. All right. Ch- thanks for checking in there, Matt. It's good to hear from you as always. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, just, <laughs> sorry, Matt. I threw that at you, thinking, yeah, you know, you might know. Do you not know what's going on? No, I mean, I, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I have, yeah. That's my American I'm friend. <laughs> I'm fucking busy, man. <laughs> I know there's a bunch of other records I play on coming out, but I don't know. What, Holy fuck, we'll have something later, probably this year. What what are, what are some of the other records you're on? Let's plug those. I mean, I'm getting plugged uh, on the Q show. Let's plug something to yours now. Jesus Christ! <laughs> Sorry, I said that. <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> you know that band Savak that I play in. There's a new record coming out in March, I guess. Great record, fantastic record. You heard it already? Yeah, oh yeah. Uh, Sorab sent it to me. Jesus Christ! I know everything. Okay. You you don't know who you're dealing with here, pal. I got everything. I know what's going well, on. Well, fill fill the listeners in on the rest for me, then, okay? Okay, I forget what it's called. <laughs> rotting teeth, something. A mouthful of rotting teeth. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Yeah. Another, it's a so Rob thing. There's um, <laughs> that's great. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. Something. I don't know. Okay. No, that's There's fair. I, I just wanted to give you a chance to speak. Other Matt, do you have anything you want to talk about? Uh, no, I don't think so. Okay. All right. That's good enough for me. It doesn't uh, go live, right? This doesn't go live to air because I need to ride home from the airport tonight. <laughs> no, no, it won't be live to air. By the time okay. people hear this, you'll you'll be at home. I'm, and... cool. I'm fine, man. Okay. <laughs> it's it's good to hear from you. Uh, Brian, um, where can people go to learn more about uh, Holy Fuck and this album, Deleter? Is there somewhere online? Yeah, we, you can find us on uh, all the... Uh, all the known places, you know, we're out there. Holy fuck, it's easy to remember. Um, hopefully it doesn't direct you to some sort of pornography. But uh, we still are able to get away with it in this day and age. So you can find us on Facebook and all those evil places. And 
<laughs> DSPs, you know, that's what they call them now, uh, where they, you can listen to us and we will never know. Um, that's, yeah, we're out there. And, uh, of course we have a website, but I, what is it? Is it, it's a holy fuck music. Same as it ever was. Same as it ever was. Yeah. Holy fuck Okay. All right. And, uh, the album's out on last gang. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Last gang, um, in Canada and, um, elsewhere in the world. Okay, awesome. If we can go out on a song from a uh, deleter, I'm wondering if Graham, Graham, can you pick a song for us to go out on here? Yeah, when can you, you go? Out? Wish, oh, sorry. You, uh, no, no, from the new album, please. No copyright infringement beyond what. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna, I was gonna request a Tom Petty song, but okay. Uh, this is not. This is not a call in request show. I, I can't <laughs> just play whatever you want. I. It uh, has to be from. The leader by Holy Fuck. I think that makes the most sense. Uh, why don't we? Why don't you play the title track or, or the so, the the the, uh, the pluralized title track? <laughs> <laughs> yes, the leaders is the song that we alluded to this earlier. Uh, I think we we captured what it's about. Unless did you want to say, Graham? I asked Brian mostly about it. Do you want to say anything about it? About the song? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, it's it's really uh, we like the song. Uh, it's really fun to play, um, and uh, it speaks to society about <laughs> the that happen on the on the world. You know, um, you, let me ask you. Let fine. me. That was good. Let me ask you a practical question, though. You have guest vocalists on your album. What do you do with these songs live? Um, Brian's been Brian's been putting on different hats. And, and singing their parts. We haven't. We've only done one of uh, one of them. The um, Nick's part we don't do because of uh, where it is in the, in the song. Actually, there's we we stretched it out sort of differently. So that's one of the beautiful things about Holy Fuck is like you can hear the record and get one experience, but then when you come see us live, you'll get a, a, a different experience. Not not too dissimilar, but it, it's it, which I think is good. You know, like you're not gonna, you won't hear the album exactly. Because you could just do that at home. So when you come see us live, it's a bit different. So Right, and you um, guys have a lot of tour dates, I saw, so people should go see you live. Yes, we do. We have some shows. We're, we're hitting the road in at um, the end of March and in the States and some Canada, and then we go to Europe for a month in May, and then we come back in June to do more U.S. and Canada. So we'll awesome. be busy during summer, yeah. Well, I'm so happy that uh, you guys are, are back so soon. I mean, the last record was only out a couple of years ago, I guess, right? Is that right? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I, I, it, it makes me happy that Holy Fuck is around, if that's uh, worth anything to you. And I thank you for this time. Well, and, I, and I just want to let people know, uh, check out the uh, Holy Fuck session at uh, CBC Radio Q, uh, which has nothing to do with my show, but I'm sure it's going to be great. And, uh, and I hope that people uh, support the CBC and that show Q, because uh, I think they could use your support. And guys, I, I wish you the best of luck with everything going forward. This is Deleters by Holy Fuck. Thank you, Holy Fuck. I will talk to you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.
Well, it was very, very nice to catch up with my friends in the band Holy Fuck on this, the 519th episode of Creative Control, which is part of the Entertainment One Podcast Network and is available on everything. All iOS, Android platforms, Spotify, YouTube, Audio Boom, what have you. It's everywhere. If you can't find an episode that you've heard about and are looking for, or if you want to learn more about me and sign up for my semi-regularly scheduled newsletter, which I really should put one out soon. I don't know why I'm dilly-dallying on that. But anyway, if you want to learn more about those things, please visit my website, which is new and improved, vishkana.com. You can like Creative Control on Facebook. You can follow the show on Twitter at Vish Creative, or you can follow me at Vish Kana. Also, please visit patreon.com slash creative control to make a flexible monthly donation to keep this podcast going. Again, uh, if you're new to the show, if you pledge $6 or more to our Patreon, you have access to exclusive content from my audio archives. So please check out patreon.com slash creative control and support the show today. Thanks again to Pete's Trocadero, the bookshelf and Planet Bean Coffee in Guelph, and Granddad's Donuts in Hamilton for their in-kind support for this show. Uh, thanks, as always, to my dear friend, Jim Guthrie. You can learn more about Jim at jimguthrie.org. He makes wonderful music. The music you're hearing right now behind me, Jim made that, and he makes more such things. jimguthrie.org. He is a good man, and I miss him. I miss him. He's in Ontario, and I'm in Alberta now, and I miss Jim. Oh, Jim. I'm going to go to jimguthrie.org just so I can get my fix. And thank you. Thank you very much for listening to this program, this podcast, and uh, telling your friends about it and subscribing to the show, suggesting they do the same. That means a lot. And that's all I have to say. I will talk to you very, very soon. Goodbye for now.